All right, so you saw what this title of the video is, so let me just get into it right now. Deltarune Chapter 2 finally came out after nearly three years of waiting, and we got some pretty major stuff that happened in the chapter. There's some, like, pretty good moments that happen and that reveal a lot about this world again. And this is only the second chapter out of seven, so I guess we can get to theorizing, you know? This will be my first theory video since the Among Us lore video, so that's nice. So, um, wow, we're really going ahead now. I am doing this completely unscripted. I literally just got my OBS recording software and I'm doing this completely unscripted. I really want to, like, talk about my feeling, Like, uh, talk about, like, what I think is going on in Deltrune um, Chapter 2. I should have done a playthrough, but I didn't have enough time and everybody got their videos out and I just want to do this, so yeah. Anyway, heavy spoilers for Deltarune Chapter 2. If you have not seen it, please, for the love of God, click off this video right now. And if you have, then there may be potential spoilers for Chapter 3 if, if I get this right. Only if. So yeah, I really want to cover it, so let's jump right into it then. Okay, one more time. I'm just going to say it again. Spoilers. If you have not seen the ending, 3... Two, one. Okay, here's the ending. Chris opens a dark fountain. Yeah, apparently Chris is the knight. Um, which I actually thought of like a while back. Like it was my own personal theory that like Chris was the knight trying to like, like prepare the stuff for um Asriel's return. But I guess that actually is uh, true. He is the knight. Oh, or they. I I don't know what the gender is, but I'll just say they for now on. Sorry if I say he from the part. Uh, anyway. So, they, like, open a fountain in the middle of their home with Susie and Toriel, meaning that they're probably going to be potential characters. Undyne is also getting called over to it, to the situation. Maybe even Nasbluk may come over, too. But either way, um, we have, like, four potential, like, characters to be in it. Along with a TV villain, apparently. I know people keep saying this is Omega Flowey, but I highly don't think it is. Like, if you look at them side by side... They are completely different, like, smiles and, like, face appearance. It could be a reference, but I don't think it is Omega Flowey. I think it's just a TV villain saying what the next game is going to be based around. Um, pretty much, Chris is the knight, though, like, opening all the dark fountains. And you might be asking, well, then why is he helping sealing them? Well, I don't think he's doing it forcefully. It's sort of, like, the soul trying to do it. But, again, if you're, like... Asking why is he like stop the soul from doing it? Well, I mean it may be like what Rousey said and I actually saw this in a comment of one video uh, I forgot I can't find it right now. I forgot where it was but um, Pretty much this is a really good theory is that the reason you need to close the fountains is because Chris basically opening the fountains is him sucking himself into his own fantasy world each world probably was influenced by Asriel in some sort of way before he left. So he basically takes his knife, plunges it, and then makes a dark fountain out of it. So he can live that fantasy again. And although we don't see him enjoying it, he probably is deep inside, like, happy because he's able to enjoy this fantasy. But just like basically all things, if you get too much of a good thing, it will end up being bad, basically. Pretty much, if he opens too many dark fountains... They'll basically, uh, they, sorry, I, I messed up with pronouns again, sorry. No, but they'll get consumed by it pretty much. And that's why Chris, like, just can't open multiple fountains. Which will probably lead into the next chapters. Maybe he, and maybe they eventually start opening a bunch of dark fountains or something. That is what's going on with Chris, at least. Chris is the knight opening dark fountains to, uh, to basically live his fantasy, since... His home life is pretty, like, it's not, it's, it's not bad, but it's not, I don't know, it, it's definitely worse than what he had before. His mom and dad are broken up, and his brother's off, and the only friend he had, his brother is off to college. So, yeah, pretty much, it's just like that. Now, let's talk about Susie. Susie ends up staying home, like, uh, you know, in a sleepover with them. And you might be asking, well, why is that a big deal? Well, it's because, like, Toyo just offers it to her instantly. It may be because there's tire slashing, but I, I actually think that Toyo knows about Susie's home life. It's either that she has, like, abusive, like, parents or something, or that she doesn't have parents and is homeless, which is why she eats chalk at school. 
because that's the only thing she can eat. It's like an, it's an iffy um, theory, but I really think that's the theory that like Susie's home life is just basically complete trash. And also that's why Susie doesn't like want you to walk her home. She wants to walk you home instead. And plus everybody around town hates her. So that probably also doesn't help. Next up, let's talk about Rousey. Rousey pretty much, um, that's my uh, mysterious in the first part, but I feel like they're more so, I feel like they were more so just very confident for once. Because they were able to show their identity. So I'm guessing that was why. And, uh, you know, they tell you to bring all the cards down. Because that's yeah, that's how it works. You bring, like, all the items and stuff down there. And they become... They go into that world where the door is right there in the closet. Which is pretty nice, actually. Anyway. Um... Rousey. I think what is happening with Rousey... The reason why Rousey could go into multiple dark worlds without, like really being affected like the other ones is like oh uh, you know because he has his own world and can travel between it but like why can he travel between it but nobody else can and why can anybody be in his world but they can't be in other worlds well i feel like it's because well see i know uh, people have said this countless times before but is a reflection of asriel it's literally just chris's like fantasy of asriel and what it used to be like when they were kids probably I feel like it's either that, or maybe even like some sort of stuffed doll of um, Azrael he always brings with him. I don't know, something attach attaching to Azrael, that is the reason why Rousey is able to follow them in so many places. Like it would explain a lot about like how he acts, how he wants to help Chris. Like at all times, he always wants to help Chris. And it just, it would mean so much if, like, you know, that was the reason. Because it's a reflection of what Asriel, like the Asriel Chris remembers. And the reason maybe he's opening these Dark Fountains is also because he's worried about what Asriel would be like when he comes back. Because that would be a really good one too. That he's very worried about what Asriel would be like when he comes back. And, you know, just all of that will really, like, just, it will just mess him up. So he needed that little comfort about um Masriel before you left and created Rousey in a sort of sense you know um last thing I wanted to cut well one of the last things I wanted to cover I may cover a few more things before I end but another thing is Banta Neo and Jevil they both are basically secret boss characters that both give you shadow crystals and a weapon of their choosing depending on how you um finish them off but both of them have a pretty tragic and interesting backstory both of them ended up talking to this strange man a strange man with a smile or a strange man who only spoke in garbage noise and pretty much um he basically screwed their worlds up jevil found out that his world amounts to nothing and that he his like his choices do not matter at all making him the only one to know and eventually he got locked up because of you know knowing that he, he knew they were free. He knew. He basically, like he said, he was the only one free. Um, Spamton, however, in this game, um, again, spoilers if you don't know who Spamton is. Spamton, who turns into Spamton Neo, you know, Metaton. It's actually a Metaton Neo reference, seeing as not only the song reflects it, but also the suit itself reflects uh, Metaton Neo's um, final form. Anyway, he's. Uh, when you go into, after you defeat him, he talks about his origin story, like, not him, but sort of like his followers. It's more so his, like, close colleagues from before he became popular. Pretty much, he talked to this strange, like, he wanted to be a big shot one day. So he talked to this strange man who just sort of called, he called, or the man called him. They actually don't know what happened, but pretty much, he got called one day by this man, and pretty much was like i'm gonna make you a big shot and he did he became a big shot he became famous but eventually the man stopped calling the man stopped talking to him and spamton was ruined he didn't become a big shot anymore he was kicked out of the queen's castle he was just left alone and then spamton started talking to the man again and he left um while the phone was still on one of his close colleagues went to answer the phone and he heard nothing but garbage noise that alone just indicates something if you listen to the cell phone while you're in any dark world you get
nothing but garbage noises. Which means Spamton, and, and you know, if you know what the sound sounds like in Undertale and everything, then you know what sound I'm talking about. Gaster. Yes, he, even Gaster got the Spamton. I'm guessing, okay, hear me out. I wanted to think that Gaster plays a big role in this story, but he, for all we know, he could not. He could, it could just be Toby trolling again. What if the person making the garbage noise is just a complete troll? It's maybe even the Toby Fox dog impersonate Gaster. For all we know, it could be that. I mean, I, I hope it's not. I really want there to be something Gaster related finally, but I, you never know. But just saying, take it with a grain of salt in just in case. So, uh, what I'm guessing is that each chapter has a secret character that you either meet along the journey or you meet or you like hear about that has been turned by Gaster in some sort of way. Like he finds out some hidden truth. Jevil wanting to be free and, and all that stuff. Well, Jevil not wanting to be free but wanting everybody else to be free just like him. And Spamton wanting a soul so he can become a big shot. He even says... To Chris, that soul you have. Not hit, not Chris's soul, that soul you have. He knows the soul isn't Chris's. And he wants it for himself. And also, I think Spamton is kind of also a metaphor for Chris. You see, Spamton during his boss fight is attached on strings like a puppet. And he says it himself. In in this pacifist, um, in the, you know, the pacifist run when you're trying to defeat him, you basically cut the swing, strings off and try to free him pretty much. And once you get to the last one, he's like, oh, thank you so much for trying to free me. And now he learns the power of friendship and everything. But once you cut off the last string, he just falls and collapses like a puppet without their strings. Pretty much what I think is, and a metaphor is that whenever Chris takes his heart out, he always looks basically just off. Like he can barely walk, he can barely move, he can barely do anything. Yeah, as soon as he puts that heart in, he was perfectly fine. He got up perfectly fine. What I think is that that's what's happening. He's like, he's not able to be, pretty much live anymore. The heart's controlling him forever, which is also why he's just so angry and stuff, probably. Like, um, later on, when you, like, um, during, um, the hometown sequence where you're in the hospital, when you try playing the piano, the soul doesn't know how to play the piano. Chris is an expert because his mother played the piano, but. He can't. Apparently he was a really good a uh, pianist, but apparently he's not. But it's not because he's not anymore. It's because the soul is doing it. The soul is playing the piano, not Chris himself. The soul is controlling Chris. Just like how Spamton is controlled by the wires, Chris is controlled by the pup by the um heart. I mean it's just a really good metaphor for Chris, honestly. And it would make his character even sadder. Like, why did he get this soul? Where did it come from? I mean, it probably is the Undertale soul that traveled over or something somehow. Uh, since, you know, Sans still recognizes you. I don't, I don't think there's any dialogue interesting in this game compared to Chapter 1. Maybe Chapter 1 was just like, just a little, like, you know, a little joke, you know. But it may not have been. It might have been actual legitimate stuff. And Sans does know that, hey, it's the heart from the, old, from, um, the previous adventure I had. He, but you, again, you never know what you're going to get. He, Toby Fox is a meme god. He could easily just like diverse any of this off topic. Like completely. There could be like so many different things that this story is actually about. And we don't even know. But that's kind of what I want to discuss. There's like four things, different things that happen in this chapter. Basically... Chris is the knight, but he's really, but it's really because he's a kid struggling with a bunch of emotional issues. Susie is uh, probably most likely either uh, an abused or homeless kid, which is why they only eat chocolate school and don't really talk about their home life. Rousey is the pretty much um, good uh, side of Asriel that Chris wants to remember. And, and Spamton and Jevil are corrupted people like that were influenced by Gaster. And um about the Spamton and like the fourth thing I mentioned, Spamton and Jevil. I feel like each one's gonna I mentioned this, but I feel like each one's gonna have a different like, you know, boss, a secret boss you fight. And each time you get a shadow crystal, maybe that leads to the bunker being more and more open. 
Maybe in the end you open the bunker and that's how you find Gaster. That would be pretty interesting. I mean, it's weird how Gaster is able to manipulate these characters in Chris's fantasy world. But if for all we know that Gaster gave Chris the heart, maybe he could to influence people in Chris's fantasy. I mean, that would be interesting to see, you know? Um, there are also some other stuff like um, whether or not um, Queen is actually Lancer's mom. Uh, maybe it could be that she's like a online card, you know, you know, like, I don't know, solitaire or something. She could be just like that. And they seem to have known each other. So maybe they are actual, like they, maybe they are actually Lancer's, um, you know, parents. I, we, we never know. Um, maybe Queen is actually Lancer's mom. Uh, again, I never know. Maybe Wolves card will get with her one day. <laughs> God, he, he was certainly trying, wasn't he? But hey, that's just a theory, a JK theory, yeah, uh, I, I feel horrible for saying that. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments about any of these theories. Tell me what you, your theories are for the next chapter. Personally, I think it's going to be a TV world scenario with Toyo, Susie, well, obviously Rousey's going to be there too. Um, maybe Undyne and Napster Bluke, depending on how quickly they get there. And I think at the end of this chapter, Susie's, or like, at least somewhere in there, Susie's gonna realize that Chris is the knight. Or one of them is gonna realize. Because I feel like revealing it this early means that they have to discover in the next game. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Hopefully we won't have to wait another three years for this game because I'd be driving then and I really don't want to be doing that when, when, when yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And... Tell me your theories down in the comments again. And yeah, uh, see you next time. Bye.